Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at chapter 6, which discusses the cost of production. So we're going to be looking at the different types of costs that you get, um, how to calculate these costs, as well as how to draw the different cost curves for each of the different costs that we have. Okay, so we're going to start off with economic costs. So economic costs are the payments that a firm must make or the income it must provide to attract the resources it needs away from alternative production opportunities. Now you get two types of economic costs. You get explicit costs and you get implicit costs. Explicit costs are the monetary payments a firm must make or makes to those who supply labor, resources, mate materials, transport, etc. Okay, then you have implicit costs. These are the opportunity costs of using self-owned, self-employed resources. So it's the monetary payments that self-employed resources could have earned in the best alternative use. Okay. So an example of implicit cost would be if we have um, a house with a spare room and we're using the spare room as our office. Our implicit cost would be the rent which we could have earned if we let that um, room out instead of using it as an office. Then economic costs are implicit costs plus your explicit costs. Then you have normal profit as a cost. Now normal profit is the remuneration for entrepreneurship. So it's the payment made by a firm to obtain and retain entrepreneurial ability. Okay, so it's like paying an entrepreneur a salary. That's why it's as a cost. It's the minimum income entrepreneurial ability you must receive to induce it to perform entrepreneurial functions for a firm. Okay, then you have economic profit or pure profit. Now, this is when a firm's total revenue exceeds its economic costs. Then the difference goes to the uh, entrepreneur as economic profit or pure profit. So economic profit is the difference between your total revenue and your economic costs. Then you have the short run and the long run. When the demand for a firm's product changes, the firm's profitability may depend on how quickly it can adjust to the amount of the various resources it employs. So this differs between the short run and the long run because um, of the different time periods in between the, the short run and the long run. So in your short run, you have a fixed plant. This is because the, the period of the short run is too short in order to change your plant capacity. So the short run is a period too short for a firm to alter its plant's capacity, but it's long enough to permit a change in the degree to which the fixed plant is used. So you can use more resources um, to produce more, um, or you can use your plant either less extensively or more extensively. Okay, then you have your long run, which is your variable plant. We say variable plant because your plant capacity or your plant size can either increase or decrease. So we look at two different viewpoints. You have your existing firm's viewpoint, which is a period long enough for it to adjust the quantities of all the resources that it employs, including plant capacity. And then you have the industry viewpoint, which is your existing firm's viewpoint, but it also includes enough time for existing firms to dissolve or leave the industry and for new firms to enter the industry. Okay, then we look at short run um, production relationships. Okay, here you have total product, you have marginal product, and you have average product. So total product is a total quantity or total output of a particular good or service that is being produced, right? Marginal product is extra or, um, output or added output associated with adding a unit of a variable resource to the production process. So this is the extra output that you're producing, okay? Now this formula here is wrong, so let's just take this out. So your marginal product is a change in your total product over a change in your quantity, okay? Then you have average product, which is a total output produced per unit of a resource employed. And this is equal to your total product over your variable factor. So if, if your variable factor is labor, then it will be the units of labor that you have used. Okay. Then you have short run production costs. This is your fixed costs, your variable costs, and they give you your total costs. Okay. So fixed costs are costs that do not change with the change in your output. They stay the same. 
variable costs change with the change in, the, in your output. So the more you produce, the higher your variable costs. And then total cost um, is your fixed cost plus your variable cost. Total cost increased by the same amount as your variable cost. Here, the difference between your total cost and your total variable cost curves is your fixed cost. Okay. Then you have average fixed cost, you have average variable cost, and you have average total cost. Okay. So average fixed cost um, is your total fixed cost over your quantity. Now, average fixed cost must decline as output increases. It's also known as spreading the overhead. Now, why does this happen? It's because your cost is spread over a larger output. So you're dividing your total fixed cost by a larger number. So your average fixed cost will decrease. Then you have average variable cost. So this is um, equal to your total variable cost over your quantity. As added variable resources increase output, average variable cost declines initially, reaches a minimum, and then increases again. Okay. Um, then you have average total cost, which is your uh, total cost over your quantity, or it is just your average fixed cost plus your average variable cost. Okay. Then you have marginal cost. Now, again, marginal cost is the additional cost or the extra cost of producing um, one extra unit of output. Okay, it is calculated by saying a change in your total cost over a change in your quantity. Now, marginal costs are costs that the firm can control directly and immediately. And very important is that the MC curve, your marginal curve, um, cost curve, cuts your average variable cost curve and your average total cost curve at their lowest points. So when you draw this graph in the test, make sure that it that your MC is cutting your AC, ATC and your AVC at their lowest points, okay? Um, otherwise, you're going to lose marks. Then um, your MC below your ATC, your ATC is going to fall. If your MC is above your average total cost, your average total cost rises. MC below your AVC, your AVC falls. And MC above AVC, your AVC rises. Okay. Then you look at the relationship between marginal cost and marginal product. So if marginal product is rising, your marginal cost is going to fall. Now, again, this is because your marginal product is the extra units that, are, that is being produced. So as you increase your marginal product, your cost is being divided amongst more products. That is why your marginal cost is going to fall. Okay, then you have the relationship of marginal cost to your AVC and your ATC. Okay, so if MC is less than your ATC, ATC will fall. But if MC exceeds ATC, ATC is going to rise. Now, your marginal cost only includes those costs that change with output. So that is your total cost and your variable cost. And that is why the MC does not intersect with your um, average fixed cost curve because it does not change with output. Okay, then you have long run production cost. Now, here we look at the firm size and cost. So for a time, larger and larger plant sizes will lead to lower unit costs. Your average total cost will decrease. But beyond some point, larger plant sizes will lead to higher average total cost. Okay. So if you look at this graph over here, your various short run cost curves will um, make up your long run cost curve. So here we're looking at average total cost. So your short run average total cost curves make up your long run average total cost curve. Your first one is your, the first one of your short run average total cost is your smallest plant. And the last one represents your largest plant. Okay. Okay, this graph here, if they ask you to draw it, just memorize it how it is like this. And you draw it as it is. Even your cost curves, you can just memorize it where they are, how they intersect each other. Memorize how it is and then just draw it as it is in, in the test. Then we look at economies and diseconomies of scale. Okay, so economies of scale is known as economies of mass production. 
This is because the more you produce, your average costs decrease. So your economies of scale, um, it's a reductions in the average total cost of producing a product as the firm expands the size of its plant or output in the long run. And these are the factors that lead to lower production costs. So labor specialization, managerial specialization, efficient capital, and other factors which include startup costs. So startup costs are part of your short run. So in the long run, you don't have startup costs, which lead to a lower production cost. Okay. Then you have diseconomies of scale. Now, this is when you have higher average cost. Okay. So it increases in the average total cost of producing a product as a firm expands the size of its plant or its output in the long run. Now, diseconomies of scale are caused by the problems of coordination and communication that arise in large firms. Now, here we have a graph that represents the long run average cost curve. Okay. In the beginning, you're going to have economies of scale, then you have constant returns to scale, and then you have diseconomies of scale where your average costs are increasing. Okay. So this graph also, you can just memorize it as it is. Okay. Now we're going to look at a practice question, okay? Here we're going to um, look at how do we calculate the different costs, okay? And this is a 100% test question, okay? You will definitely get it in your test, okay? So here they give you your quantity, total fixed cost, total variable cost, your total cost, average variable cost, and your marginal cost. So your total fixed cost plus your total variable cost gives you your total cost okay and then you have to calculate average variable cost and your marginal cost so to begin with we're going to start with quantity zero right at quantity zero you have a total cost of 15 now when you're producing zero units of something it means that you have zero variable cost okay so this is going to be zero and this will be 15 and then you can't have average variable cost and your marginal cost is also zero. Okay, then when you produce one output or your quantity one, you are given a total cost of 23 and you're given nothing else. Now remember your marginal cost is a change in your total cost over a change in your output. Okay, so we have total cost and we have what we need to calculate MC. We have our total cost, we have our quantity. Okay, so we're going to say 23 23 minus 15. Oh no. Okay. Let's try that again. 23 minus 15 over 1 minus 0 is going to give you 1. So 23 minus 15 is going to give you 8. So your MC is 8. Okay. Oh, before we carry on, we have total fixed cost. So remember, total fixed costs don't change, okay? So whether you're producing one unit or you're producing three units, your total fixed cost is going to be the same. So we're going to fill it in here, 15, 15, and 15, okay? That should be the first thing that you actually do, okay? Now we have our total cost. We have our total fixed cost. We can calculate total variable cost by saying 23 minus 15, which gives us 8 again. Then your average variable cost is your total variable cost divided by quantity. So 8 divided by 1 is 8. Okay. Then quantity 2, we have nothing besides marginal cost, which is given. Now, we know what marginal cost is. So we can try to figure out what total cost is. Um, and then we can work from there. So we know that marginal cost is a change in your total cost over a change in your quantity. We have quantity, we just don't have this value, we're going to make it x, for your total cost. So what you say is, I'm going to use another color, 
you're going to say, so we made this one x. So we have to say x minus 23 over 2 minus 1 is 1 is equal to 4, which they give us is our marginal cost. So we're going to take this 23 over, it becomes plus 23, so x is equal to 27. Okay, so our total cost is then 27. Okay, now we can calculate total variable cost by saying 27 minus 15, which will give us 12. Okay, so that gives us 12, and then we can get our average variable cost by saying 12 divided by 2, which gives us 6. Okay, then for quantity 3, we are given total fixed cost and we're given total variable cost. So we can get total cost, which is then 30. And then average variable cost is 15 divided by 3, which is 5. Okay, and our marginal cost, you're going to say 30 minus 27 over 3 minus 2 is 1. So 30 minus 27 is 3. Okay. So whenever you're doing a question like this, write down your formula, fill in what you have, and then if you, if you don't have something, you just solve for that, okay? Always, always, always fill this in first, your total fixed cost. They can either give you this, the first one, then you need to know that all of that is the same, and then you can work out your total variable cost, or you can work out your total cost if you are given one of the, uh, two of the three, okay? Right, okay, so this is how you do this question. I hope this video helped you. Um, thank you.